third and 12. They started the series from their 31, 33. Knees right to the open hand. Last rim at the 49. He curled in and found the crack. And Sneed nailed him. Well, that gets the Giants going again. Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Gridiron. And before I get started, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody out there who's been watching my videos. I greatly appreciate it. If you give my videos like a thumbs up or maybe leave a comment below or maybe share the video, and I would greatly appreciate it. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, just some of the news that I saw from the Giants from yesterday's, um, you know, the training camp on Monday, August 2nd. Um, thankfully, I didn't see anything as far as any... Anybody getting hurt? Knock on wood, huh? That's always a good thing. Um, some of the things I saw, uh, the Giants, did, you know, Alfred Morris came in, okay, and he was expected to sign, and they did sign him, so that's cool, right? Um, it gives it gives a lot more, you know, some good quality competition at running back. Now, he played for the Giants uh, last year, nine games, all right? He had 55 carries for 238 yards, so a little over four yards a carry. So, <laughs> with the offensive line we had last year, that ain't too bad. He had only had one touchdown, but he had also caught three passes uh, for 19 yards and one touchdown. I believe that was his first and only um, pass-receiving touchdown of his career. So, congratulations, Alfred. But, you know, we got, now we got a bunch of, you know, a lot of, a lot of, Good, nice quality behind Saquon. I mean, I'm not saying we're, you know, we're elite or anything like that, but we got some nice depth behind him. I mean, if you got, um, you figure we got Alfred Morris and Devontae Booker, okay, then we got Corey Clement, and then we got uh, Gary, drafted Gary Brightwell, well, we got, we got uh, Elijah Penny, we got Mike Weber, uh, Sandro Platzcomer. I mean, we got I said Alfred Morris, Saquon Barkley. So, I mean, we got we got a, a lot of guys. That certainly doesn't mean that the, we, you know we're not going to keep bringing maybe try somebody else in here or there or whatever. But it just seems like a lot of guys um, if, if things aren't guys aren't catching on or maybe something happens to them or whatever. It just seems like you know we're you know going to let them go and maybe bring somebody else in. So. You know, we got, you know, eight or nine of them I just raffled off right there. So it doesn't mean that we won't be bringing more guys in. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But as of right now, Alpha Mars is on the team. And, you know, as I was saying, if he, he does make the team, it's good. I mean, you know, his experience, he's a good quality, experienced veteran who will add some good leadership, you know, to the team, to the running back group, to the locker room and all that. The only thing is you're not going to get, you're not going to get no special teams play out of him now, you know. Special teams is very important, you know, especially, you know, um, if you, you just, if you just like a running back, you know, no, I'm just, I'm just third string runner. That's all I do. I don't, I don't do special teams. And I, I mean, so it's, it's kind of tough to take up a roster spot, you know, if you, especially if you, I mean, like Daniel Jones, okay, you're not on special teams. Saquon Barkley, I get it. You're not, you know, Kenny Galladay, okay, I get it. You're not, you're not, you know, you know, you can see some guys starting guys and all that, not being on special teams. I can see that. But, I mean, if you're a second or third stringer or so, you know, and you're not going to be on special teams, that's, you know, that's pretty tough. But that's a, that doesn't mean he's, the offense is going to make the team. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, they also, Giants also hosted a couple other guys. They got a uh, former Mississippi State quarterback who turned tight end, a guy named I never heard him before. Tommy Stevens, all right? He was seventh round pick uh, by the Saints in, uh, last year. All right. Um, then they, they like, kind of like he got signed by the Panthers, all right, uh, after he was drafted by the Saints. He's six foot five, 237. So it's a good size for a quarterback, but also six foot five is a good size for a tight end as well. 237 is a little nice size for a quarterback, but, you know, you know. Unless he's a burner, 237 is a little light for a tight end. But, you know, I mean, to get in there and mix it up with the guys as far as blocking, 237, uh, you know, a little on the light side. But, 
But the, you know, he was signed by the Panthers last year, and he got in on one game last year. It was the Week 17 game that got smoked by the New Orleans Saints, 33-7, to last game of the season. But he was listed as a quarterback, and the thing was that somehow he got he got four carries as a running back for 24 yards, and he got two first downs. So he did pretty good as a running back, but, I mean, so exactly what the Giants are going to use him in, I mean, they got a ton of tight ends, unless they brought him in to try to replace Kelvin Benjamin. I don't know. You know. Um, so, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, and then they got Andy, they brought Andy Jones in. He's 27 years old, six foot one, 220 pounds. He was originally signed by the Cowboys. He was on a draft of free agent in 2016. 2016 to 2018, he was with the Cowboys, the Texans, and the Lions. In 2019, okay, he was signed with the Dolphins, all right, and then last year he sat out the whole season because of COVID, all right. Yeah, he's played in 11 career games. He's had three starts. He's caught 11 balls for 80 yards and one touchdown. So I'm not exactly sure, you know, what he's going to bring to the table, but well, I, I just they're just bringing guys in and out. And neither one of the guys, either um, um, Andy Jones – Okay, or Tommy Stevens, neither one of them was like a media that you know, offered a contract. So they just, they just brought him in, tried him out, you know, and I'm not exactly sure if they're going to resign him or not. But, I mean, as of right now, they haven't signed either one of them. All right, but they, they keep bringing in warm bodies. So you, you can't complain if the Giants aren't at least trying. All right, you got, you got to give them that, all right. Um, then they got... Um, they did sign. They signed Joe Looney. So it looks kind of like that. Um, since they signed Joe Looney, all right, Austin Ryder is in. He apparently he came in and he talked with the Giants. But see, with Joe Looney, he has a little more flexibility. He also has a little um, familiarity with you know obviously with Jason Garrett because he's coming from the, the Cowboys. But uh, Looney can play like center and guard. Now, Austin Ryder, uh, you know, he's had some nice numbers, especially with the Chiefs. Very, very nice numbers. But he's more specifically just like a center. Okay, so we got, you know, we got Jonathan Harrison, all right, um, who's hurt. But when he comes back, we have Anthony, got Nick Gates, and you got Joe Looney, who can become center as well, too. I mean, if you're going to bring Austin Ryder in, yeah. How many centers can you have? I mean, you only got so many roster spots, and you can't sign. You can't have four guys on the on the roster that are going to be a, going to be a center, you know. So apparently, Austin Ryder, you know, um, is going to have to look for a job elsewhere because we got Joe Looney. So we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, the big news that I saw today was that uh, Joe Judge was talking about Saquon Barkley. All right, um, said that you know he's making making some pretty good headway. Uh, he's making some um, some tangible, what he, he kind of said, progress towards a, a return to practice. All right, so that's good. Um, now, in the recent whatever weeks or whatever, da uh, Saquon's kind of downplayed his return, so that there's a, a little bit of optimism that we can see Saquon on the practice field before Week One. All right, uh, you know, the regular season be. Uh, when we play the, uh, the, the Broncos, all right? Um, though, I mean, I w if he comes back to practice, I don't, I wouldn't anticipate him seeing him in any preseason games. Uh, we know what he can do. The only the big question is, is, you know, is he going to be fully healed up, ready to go? And the other question will be, you know, is he, will, will be back to like 100%. Now, you see videos of him, you know, he's posting videos and stuff of him, you know, doing some, some moves and this, that, and the other thing and all. You know, you, you know, so, I mean, it looks decent, but that's not in the regular season. So I, we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully he comes back. A lot of guys come back and they're just as good as they were before. So, I mean, uh, if uh, the operation all went well, you know he's training as hard as he possibly can. I guess the way things are, you know, I guess we shouldn't, you know, Hope, we should hope and expect, you know, hopefully that he comes back 100%. Now, if he can just come back 100%, that would be absolutely fantastic. And as I said, we're not going to, you know, see him probably in the preseason. And if he is back for week one, okay, when we play the Broncos, all right, you know, maybe 10 touches, right, maybe week two, give him maybe 12 touches, maybe, you know, 12 to 15, maybe. 
week three, maybe 15, 16, 17 touches. Maybe maybe week four, you put him up to 20 touches or something like that. You know, it's, I can't see him like, you know, week one, give him 10 touches. Week two, give him 20. Then give him 30. You know, I, mean, I can't see it. I mean, I, I can see like, you know, it's, it's a long season. <laughs> this season got even longer because now that it's 18 weeks and there's 17 games. So, you know, if, if we bring him back too soon and we wind up losing him in the third, fourth, fifth game or so, we got a long way to go. And it'd be, it's not going to be a long, long, tough season without Saquon. So, if we just bring him back very slowly, and if he can make it through the season, keep your fingers crossed, guys. It'd be absolutely phenomenal. Now, what I heard from a um, pretty reliable source is that apparently with Saquon in the lineup, okay, and, and with Daniel Jones is the quarterback, right, Saquon is equal to like an additional four points, right? So with Saquon in the lineup, the Giants score four more points with Daniel Jones as quarterback than when he's not in the lineup. So now if we can look back at last season, all right, it gives us something a little, 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 little something, something to look forward to here, okay? Now you got, uh, you got, um, they lost 10 games, right? Five of them were pretty much, you know, <laughs> brutal losses, all right? We lost Arizona when uh, Daniel Jones, you know, came back and he basically couldn't move. Uh, we lost it 26 to seven. Then we lost, lost to the Browns 20 to six, another phenomenal game by the Giants. Uh, then we lost, you know, the, the last game of the season that we lost, period. You know, our 10th loss of the season was to the Ravens 27 to 13. That was another brutal game to watch. We lost the first game of the season to the Steelers 26 to 16. Now that wasn't quite as bad as it seemed, I mean, because we went for two points at the end, you know, when we scored a touchdown to try to close the gap to eight points. Well, if we, if we kicked the extra point there, it would have been 26 to 17, right? Uh, earlier in the game, Daniel Jones, we had the ball around the Pittsburgh two or three yard line. Daniel Jones you know, you know, uh, threw an interception. You know, we would, you know, if you could have just thrown the ball into the ground or just took a sack or threw the ball into the, into the 17th row or something like that, right? The Giants would have kicked the field goal, would have been 26 to 20. You know, I mean, so we lost by 10, but it certainly could have been closer than that. Uh, then, of course, then we, we lost to the 49ers and they're like their 13th string team because uh, they were so badly beaten up. I, I, guess I, I, I don't know how we lost by 27 points to uh, to the 49ers at home, but we managed to do that, right? So those are the five brutal losses. The other five games, okay, if we can start figuring this out with putting Saquon in there and adding four points, all right. Now the first one, okay, is what in week two, all right? Saquon got hurt, but he got hurt in like pretty much it was like the first play of the second quarter. So we can add so so three quarters of the game he wasn't there. So all right, so if he if he got Add four points to that, all right? Giants was 17 to 13, all right? Add four points to that, it's 17 to 17. End of the game, the Giants got down to the Bears' 10-yard line. It was third down at six with four seconds to go. We bring Graham Gano in the game. He kicks the field goal. We went 20 to 17. There's victory number one. Um, the one... Well, we, game number four when we lost to the Rams. Now, if you add, we, we lost 17 to nine. Add four points to that, it's 17 to 13. At the end of the game, we're driving, and Daniel Jones has us driving down the field, and, but it's 17 to 13. A field goal wouldn't do any good. We still needed a touchdown, and, and uh, uh, Daniel Jones throws an interception. Okay, so the game was pretty much over, but you know, we we, we had, had we were close. We would have been close, but still, we would have lost that one. Okay, but then you go to game number five against Dallas. All right, we lost 37 to 34. All right, bring Saquon in the game, give us four more points. We win that one, 38 to 37. There's two extra wins we got. All right, then we, of course we lost we lost the game. The uh, the Evan Ingram. Oops, I dropped it again. I fumbled the ball. Uh, we lost the Eagles 22 to 21. Have Saquon in there. We win the game 25 to 22. There's win number three. Right. Then you got the game, we lost to Tampa. Now we went for the two-point conversion, right, to try to tie it up. You know, eh, did the defensive back from Tampa Bay get in there a little early? Maybe he did, didn't get called, he made the play, give him all the credit in the world. Giants didn't complete the pass, we lost 25 to 23. Put Saquon in there, give us five, four more points, all right? 
we might win the game 27 to 25. There's win number four, okay? So if it was four extra wins with Saquon in there, instead of us being six and 10, we're at 10 and six. Of course, we wouldn't have Kadarius Tony, you know, yada, yada, we wouldn't have two draft number ones next year, yada, yada, yada. But you can look at something like that. Like, you know, last year we were 6 and 10, things weren't too good and all. But if we had Saquon Barkley in there, and if he was actually worth four more points per game with Daniel Jones as the quarterback, we would have had four more wins. And instead of 6 and 10, we would have been 10 and 6 in the playoffs. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!